So you have a uh, patent called nuclear saltwater rocket, um, mm -hmm. which would be like a next step in uh, rocketry. Uh, can yeah. you? Exp uh, it's okay if you could like explain um, how you came up with it, with its capabilities, and how far away are we from it technologically? Well, you know, the basic idea is to have a, a, a steady state. Uh, fast fission reaction going on, uh, you know, the in, in, in nuclear fuel, like in an atom bomb or a nuclear reactor, has about a million times the energy per unit weight as any chemical fuel, uh, in round numbers. And uh, if you had a hundred times the unit weight per unit fuel, uh, then you would get 10 times the exhaust velocity. So 10 times the exhaust velocity of a, of a chemical rocket, you know, they, they have exhaust velocities about four kilometers a second, go to 40 kilometers a second. That's uh, comparable to electric propulsion. And so, gee, but 100 times the energy of chemical propellants is actually less than a thousandth of the energy of um, a nuclear fuel. So uh, basically, uh, you know, in an atom bomb, for example, they, they want to have yields of over 50% of get more than 50% the energy that's there in order to have big. But we don't need 50%. We don't need 10%. We don't need 1%. Uh, we need about 1% of 1%, and we can create a rocket with an exhaust velocity 10 times that of the best possible chemical engine. And that's basically the idea of um, the nuclear saltwater rocket. It's basically a continuous nuclear fizzle. And uh, so it's speaking of nuclear energy, um, how do you think uh, nuclear fusion will benefit humanity? And is there any particular nuclear fusion reactor design that you find to be the most promising? Well, okay, look, nuclear fusion will end all talk about energy shortages or about economic growth constrained by the fact that using more than a certain amount of fossil fuels could have environmental impacts or anything of this kind. We're talking about infinite energy relieved of, of the constraints of the conventional pollution, global warming, or anything of the kind. Uh, and we're also talking about very cheap fuel. I mean, one gallon of um, seawater contains about the same amount of energy of 350 gallons of gasoline uh, if you could use the deuterium that is in it. Now, by the way, if that was Martian water, it would be about the equivalent of 2,000 gallons of gasoline because Martian water is six times as rich in deuterium as uh, Earth water. Um, now, so that's pretty spectacular. And in fact, I think that's one reason why uh, the Mars colonists are going to develop fusion power. Uh, they've, it, it, it is the, the energy resource that is abundant on Mars and um, requires much less uh, industrial uh, processing than, for instance, producing fission fuels like uranium or thorium. Um, the, you know, Isotope enrichment of deuterium, which weighs twice as much as hydrogen, is much easier than isotope enrichment, say, of uranium, which differs by about, the different isotopes differ in mass by 1%. Um, and um, so uh, the fusion will, it's not just more energy, though, it's a different kind of energy. Uh, this is important, you know, the, you take nuclear fission, uh, okay, nuclear fission, uh, they have nuclear fission power plants, but it hasn't been a rip-roaring success. It's found a place in the market. One could debate uh, whether it could be more or should be less or something. But the one place where nuclear fission has uh, taken the world by storm is submarine propulsion. Um, that is, 
there's a lot of ways to produce electricity for your wall socket. You could do it with nuclear fission or with a coal-fired power plant or a windmill or a waterfall. You know, and, and as far as the consumer is concerned, the, the kilowatt's a kilowatt. doesn't make any difference at all. But nuclear power on a submarine has unique advantages over, you know, a diesel electric submarine. It can travel around the world underwater. The other thing that we can most spend 20 hours uh, underwater. Uh, and the, so it is qualitatively superior. And the same is true with fusion. That is, well, yeah, you could do submarines, but you could do other things. Um, you could do fusion rockets. Okay, because a fusion rocket could have an exhaust velocity about 10% the speed of light. So, in fact, that's a lot more than the saltwater rocket. Uh, the, um, you know, we're talking about in, 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 instead of 40,000 kilometers uh, a second, which would be, in other words, the, the chemical rocket's 4,000 kilometers a second exhaust velocity. Saltwater rocket, uh, maybe 40,000 kilometers a second uh, uh, exhaust velocity. Um, and um, the, oh, yeah, I'm missing something here. Um, speed of light is only 300,000 kilometers. So yeah, so um, 30,000 kilometers a second. So we go from four kilometers a second to 40 kilometers a second to 40,000 kilometers a second. Uh, that's the difference. That's what you can do with fusion. It is, enables, I mean, saltwater rockets would give you very easy transportation around the solar system. Nuclear fusion rockets are as an entry capability to interstellar travel. Thank <laughs> you.